This morning, no end in sight for Victoria's COVID crisis. Longer lockdowns loom as deaths rise and rule breakers remain defiant. New outbreak, a second Sydney Thai Rock restaurant shuts down. A staff member tests positive. And flooding alert, cars and homes inundated as an east coast low dumps rain along the New South Wales coast. This is 7 News with Edwina Bartholomew. Good morning. The COVID crisis spreading through Victoria's aged care homes is worsening as the state recorded its deadliest day of the pandemic. An extended lockdown is looking more likely as authorities plead with people to wear masks, but some are refusing to obey the new rules. A mandatory measure, yet not all Victorians are willing to cover up. I have to put you under arrest. If you arrest me, I will have you charged with false arrest. That's okay. And what's more, it's armed arrest because you have a weapon and I don't. The woman refused to wear a mask while shopping at a Bunnings. I'm just asking if you've got a mask. Well, it's clear I don't. The hardware store is enforcing a no mask, no entry policy. And I can have you sued personally for discriminating against me as a woman. It's one of a growing number of outbursts from defiant Victorians refusing to obey the new rules. And if you do arrest us, mm -hmm. you, we will be suing you okay. uh, for armed kidnapping. The Premier has slammed the behaviour. There's 10 families that are going to be burying someone in the next few days. Wear a mask. Despite a mask wearing mandate and a citywide lockdown, Victoria recorded 459 new cases yesterday, the state's second worst daily figure. Aged care homes are responsible for more than 500 active cases and a growing number of deaths as victims' families demand answers. We got to say goodbye after he passed away, so not, we didn't even get to say anything and that's what hurts us the most. Ha Nguyen, 7 News. A second Thai rock restaurant in Sydney has been closed for deep cleaning after a staff member tested positive to coronavirus. Those who attended the restaurant chain's Potts Point location between July 15 and 25th are being urged to get tested and self-isolate for 14 days. The Weatherall Park store, which is run by the same owners, has now been linked to 67 cases of COVID-19. Two other restaurants in Cabramatta and Bankstown are being monitored after they were both visited by a couple who tested positive for COVID-19. Organisers of a Black Lives Matter protest in Sydney are vowing to go ahead with the rally despite it being ruled illegal. Police won a Supreme Court bid to stop the rally yesterday over concerns the march could contribute to the spread of coronavirus. Event organisers are appealing the decision but say they'll proceed with the illegal protest regardless. Queensland's ban on people travelling from a new Sydney hotspot has now come into effect. Residents of the western suburb of Fairfield are not allowed to enter the Sunshine State. Queenslanders returning from the area will have to stay in hotel quarantine for two weeks. It comes as the state's health authorities urge people to start wearing masks in a bid to prevent an outbreak. The federal government COVID Safe app is facing increasing scrutiny as infections continue to spread. Political reporter Taylor Aitken is in Canberra. Good morning to you, Taylor. And medical chiefs are standing by the app despite the criticism. Eddie, that's right, saying the app is better than nothing in helping slow the spread of COVID-19. Three months after the app was launched, software developers have raised concerns about just how effective the app actually is. On Android devices, the app doesn't automatically update, leaving old bugs unresolved. Whereas on iPhones, the Bluetooth ping meant to record nearby contacts stops connecting after hitting 100 devices. There is also limited information about just how many cases have been identified through the app. In New South Wales, it has picked up six. However, in Victoria, despite surging case numbers there, it has failed to record any. But even critics of the app say Australians shouldn't be deleting it just yet, admitting there is still a chance of it being useful. Eddie. All right, Taylor can thank you. Australia's east coast has been slammed by wild weather brought on by a strong low pressure system. Heavy rain has caused flash flooding across parts of the New South Wales central coast. There were several rescues in Newcastle overnight, including a group of children on board a bus that was swamped. Emergency services spent the night going door to door to make sure everyone was OK. Don't think there's anybody home. 
system is deepening off the state's north coast and is expected to move south in the coming days, a severe warning for damaging winds is in place. The wet weather caused chaos on Sydney's roads overnight. Two people were taken to hospital after a crash at Guildford. Emergency services worked through heavy rain to free one of the drivers who was trapped in the wreckage. People are being urged to take extra care this morning with a road weather alert issued for dangerous conditions. One of the last surviving stars of Hollywood's golden age, Olivia de Havilland, has died at the age of 104. Her most famous role was as the virtuous Melanie opposite Vivian Lee's wayward Scarlet in the epic Gone with the Wind. De Havilland won two Academy Awards and at the time of her death was the oldest living performer to have received an Oscar. She died of natural causes at her home in Paris, where she's lived for more than 60 years. Australia has publicly declared Beijing has no legal claim to disputed islands in the South China Sea. Chinese state media says the move will further damage bilateral relations and could lead to sanctions on Australian beef and wine. Australia has filed a declaration at the UN rejecting Chinese territorial claims. Senior defence strategists are now reportedly urging Scott Morrison to green light freedom of navigation operations by Australian warships in the South China Sea. The New South Wales government is temporarily scrapping stamp duty for many first home buyers. Occupants who purchase newly built properties worth up to $800,000 won't have to pay the costly tax. Stamp duty on homes up to $1 million will also be heavily discounted. It's hoped the move will provide a boost to the construction sector and inject confidence into the property market during the COVID crisis. The economic fallout of Victoria's second wave of coronavirus is becoming clear, with the state losing its claim to the nation's best performing economy. Comsec's latest State of the States report shows how the states and territories have performed during the early stages of COVID-19. For the first time in 11 years, Tasmania is outright first, Victoria has dropped to second and New South Wales to fourth behind the ACT. Queensland has bumped South Australia out of the fifth spot, followed by Western Australia in seventh and the Northern Territory in eighth position. Australian companies have seen an increase in the number of employers struggling to get staff back to work. While the government has declared the office a safe place, many employees have adjusted to working from home and don't want to leave. It's the new work-life balance. I'm working in the office three days a week, so we're sort of rostered on and off. Half from home, half in the city. Businesses transitioning to life back in the office, but for some, staff are refusing to return to work altogether. Some employees are a bit anxious about it. They've got used to working at home and... Uh they've got set up like I have and they've got into a routine and they're enjoying it. HR Law Director Jill Hignett says technically bosses do have the legal right to force staff back to work. If the workplace is safe and they don't have any medical conditions that would prevent them coming back, you can insist that that occurs. Ultimately coming down to a case-by-case situation. It's very difficult I think for both the businesses and the people involved. Some organisations are thriving on working from home with COVID-19 forcing flexible arrangements into the new norm. There's a big opportunity now to let people work uh, more flexibly and to harness their productivity where they are comfortable working from. But the biggest test for businesses could be towards the end of the year when stimulus packages like JobSeeker end creating more change and uncertainty. For businesses, it's, it's a bit of a false world at the moment. With more adjustments ahead. Brittany Lane, 7 News. A Sydney father has become a viral sensation after being swooped by a magpie during a live online video game. Caught on camera, his run-in with the not-so-playful magpie brought a smile to thousands and earned him a new title. When former warehouse manager Rhys Lynch was three hours into an online gaming session, something out of the ordinary stopped him in his tracks. What the f***ing magpie in my house? Hey, get out of here! And all of a sudden, a bird came into my house and um, it spooked me. Reese kept on playing, but then... Yeah. Because we were in overtime and I couldn't let the boys down. But when I sat back down, I come and smack me back in the face. The video of the incident, recorded on his streaming device, went viral, viewed worldwide. Experts say the indoor attack is a freak phenomenon. It is totally about them trying to protect their chicks up in the nest from what they regard as some sort of threat. Is they've decided that they're a serious threat to be taken seriously. 
The magpie swooping season is usually around August, so it's a mystery as to what it was doing in Campbelltown at this time of the year and why it chose Reese as its target. I think my ego was hurt more than anything. <laughs> it's great that I put a smile on people's faces in this time. Of for now, it's back to target practice for the 28-year-old who lost his job during the COVID crisis, but has now found himself with a new, very important gig. <laughs> Make my wrangler, maybe. <laughs> Samantha Brett, 7 News. Nowhere is safe anymore. Checking Monday's weather for you now. That east coast low bringing rain and wind to Sydney, a top of 16 degrees. A shower or two in Melbourne and 14. Possible light morning showers in Adelaide. Windy with evening showers in Perth and sunny in Darwin and 33 degrees. Still ahead on 7 Early News, armed militia face off on the streets in the US. Donald Trump's response as tensions threaten to boil over. And the English town that took on a tornado, the rare and destructive weather event, that's next. Tensions are rising in the U.S. city of Louisville after hundreds of militia members armed with assault rifles marched into the city demanding justice for a police shooting victim. They were met by another armed group with police trying to keep both sides apart. In downtown Louisville, rival groups of heavily armed militia converged, a show of firepower in a city on edge. But as hundreds of members of what's called the NFA coalition gathered to march, suddenly gunfire. People running for cover in the confusion. Three militia members were injured, but by one of their own. Police say the gun had gone off accidentally. The group demanding justice for Brianna Taylor, the paramedic shot and killed in her own apartment in March by police who'd targeted the wrong home, giving authorities four weeks to finish an investigation into those officers. To do what the f you said you was going to do. But if you don't, we'll burn this to the ground. Members of another militia called the Three Percenters had turned up in response. Police closing streets, putting up barricades to keep them apart. As protests continue to rage in Portland, with another showdown between demonstrators and federal agents. The sight of a Navy veteran being tear gassed and beaten by officers last weekend, seeing other military veterans turn out to support Black Lives Matter protesters. Anger over federal officers being deployed in Portland, helping fuel another protest in Seattle, with buildings damaged and more than a dozen people arrested. In Los Angeles, protesters marched onto a freeway and police issued a city wide alert after vandalism and clashes with demonstrators. With Donald Trump vowing to send more officers to more cities this week. In the United States, Paul Kadak, 7 News. Hurricane Hannah has weakened to a tropical storm after making landfall along America's Gulf Coast. The powerful storm has hit Texas, bringing heavy rains and threats of life-threatening flash flooding. Wind gusts of up to 145 kilometres an hour tore roofs off buildings across the state. Hannah is the first hurricane of the season in the Atlantic. The storm is continuing to weaken as it moves inland into northeast Mexico. A tornado has swept through the English town of Northampton. The twister caused thousands of dollars worth of damage, lifting tiles from rooftops, overturning sheds and throwing debris into the air. It took just 30 seconds for the tornado to rip through homes and also community gardens. The UK usually has up to 35 tornadoes a year, but they rarely cause significant damage. Three runaway baboons have been recaptured in Ukraine after they escaped from the zoo. The trio gave zookeepers the slip in the port city of Odessa after their cage door was left unlocked. Dart guns were used to tranquilise the baboons. Their bid for freedom didn't last long. They were soon back in their enclosure with the door firmly locked shut this time. Checking finance news for now, the Dow Jones closed lower than Nasdaq did as well. In London, the FT100 lost points and Germany's DAX also fell. On the commodities market, gold is trading at 1897 US dollars an ounce. Oil is buying just over 41 US dollars a barrel. The Aussie dollar is buying 71 US cents, 75 Japanese yen and close to $1.07 New Zealand. A Michigan man has used a hyper-realistic mask to con gamblers in the US. 55-year-old John Coletti used the elderly mask to disguise himself, along with 83 fake driver's licences, plus some computer savvy, allegedly committed identity fraud, stealing nearly $170,000 from people's bank accounts. He'll face court at the end of the month. 
A Western Australian great-grandmother hasn't allowed the coronavirus pandemic to ruin her 105th birthday bash. It's not Nellie Marriott's first hurdle either. She's lived through two world wars and says there's just one secret to a long life. Walked a lot. I walked miles and miles and miles because I've never had motor cars. Nellie says the biggest change she's seen in the 100 years is the invention of household cleaning appliances. Next on 7 Early News, the Lions moved to the top of the AFL ladder after a late fright against the Demons and an English Premier league size wild celebrations after the final match of the season. To sports news now, and Brisbane have joined Port Adelaide on top of the AFL ladder after surviving a late scare against Melbourne. Cam Rayner was unlucky not to take a mark of the year competitor as the Lions went into the three-quarter time break with a comfortable 18-point lead. The Demons didn't give up, though, kicking the only three goals of the last term, and that threatened a stunning turnaround. Brisbane did hold their nerve, though, to win by four points. I didn't think it was a get-out-of-jail win, and they were always going to come at us. I mean, it was a big game for Melbourne tonight. They've, they've been on a bit of a roll. They wanted to keep that going. Daniel Rich is likely to miss Friday's clash with Essendon after hurting his hamstring. Seven goals from Josh Kennedy has led the Eagles to a 66-point drubbing of Collingwood in Perth. The Knights are reeling after losing stars Andrew McCulloch and Connor Watson to season-ending injuries in their shock six-point loss to the Bulldogs. In the space of seven minutes, the Knights lost hooker Andrew McCulloch to a shocking hamstring injury and his replacement, Connor Watson, to a ruptured Achilles. A late fight back from 18 nil down. Extraordinary. It wasn't enough for Newcastle to avoid a spray from their livid coach. I'm embarrassed for the people that sat out in that rain for 80 minutes. It's not good enough. Star Panthers rookie Stephen Crichton scored his 10th try of the season as Penrith returned to the top of the ladder with an eight-point win over the Titans. It's the club's best ever start to a season after 11 rounds. Manchester United are back in the Champions League after the final match day of the Premier League season, needing to avoid a loss to fifth place Leicester to secure a top four finish. The Red Devils broke the Foxes' hearts with a 2 0 win. Champions Liverpool finished with their highest ever points tally. That was 99 after comfortably beating Newcastle 3 1, and celebrations are set to go well into the night for Aston Villa. They avoided relegation after a one-all draw with West Ham. It was a day of mayhem for MotoGP riders at the Andalusian Grand Prix. The field couldn't even survive the opening turn before a brutal crash. And that was a nasty old impact, wasn't it? Oliveira landing right. Oh, oh dear. And he got hit by him as well. Just Aussie Jack Miller couldn't avoid the carnage, crashing out midway through the races. Fabio Quartararo made it two wins in a week. The support racers faced their own troubles with one driver stretched off the track after crashing in the Moto3. And if you thought race calling was already a tough job, try doing it without actually being able to see the horses. That's exactly what happened with race caller Jimmy Jakes doing the best he could at Port Piri. It is White Star Village. Batman Bart kicks back. White Star Village trying to get the better of it. Batman Bart holding on. White Star Village has run a great race, but Batman Bart kicks through and Batman Bart beats White Star Village, who is gallant in defeat. It was an easier job for the winner, Batman Bart, who led all the way. Next on 7 Early News, a closer look at that low-pressure system moving over the country's east coast and how the weather's shaping up across the rest of the country. <laughs> A snowstorm is causing chaos in Argentina. A huge electricity tower in Patagonia was caught on camera crashing to the ground. The structure buckling under the weight of heavy snowfall combined with strong winds. Several other electricity towers have also suffered major damage. Authorities say it will take days to reach the site to begin repairs. 
Taking a look at the weather around the country for you now. As we reported earlier, a deep low off the east coast is bringing rain, some heavy large waves and gusty winds to eastern parts of New South Wales, as well as parts of Victoria and Tasmania. A front will trigger gusty showers over southwest Western Australia, clearer skies elsewhere with a broad high. Around the capitals, mostly sunny in Brisbane, showers and windy in Sydney with a top of 16, some showers around in Canberra as well. A shower or two in Melbourne and 14 degrees, partly cloudy down in Hobart, possible late morning showers in Adelaide, windy with evening showers in Perth and sunny in Darwin, a uh, top of 33 degrees there. And that's 7 early news for this Monday the 27th of July. I'm Edwina Bartholomew. Now it's time for Sunrise with Koshi and Nat. Developing now, longer lockdowns loom, an extension likely after Victoria's deadliest day. Coronavirus cases so